everything set up. So yeah, so we in here tonight, and tonight I'm gonna talk about. Um, that's good, man. Well, you got the you got the new the new the new location opening up, so I know everything been been pretty busy for you. Congratulations on that again, man. You're gonna have them all out here looking good as soon as they touch down coming to Baltimore, man. I in, into the whole DMV area, so I'm really happy and proud for you guys. Um, James, yo, you should come holler at me. You should come kick it with me on Sunday. I'm gonna send you a message, and uh, you might you you if you got time, then you can come through on Sunday and tell some of your homies. So. Let's get to it. I was in my stories. I was just like reminiscing on some stuff for Good Part and Company. Now that I'm kind of like growing and evolving the in the health and wellness space, and uh, you know, doing more talks around holistic health, and put together a workshop and a training for how I was able to accomplish all of those things in three years. Which I mean, there have been people who've done a lot more in three years, but it's a lot for me. And and to be honest, when you do the stats on it, what I've done is not the probability. It's only the possibility that most people are going to have a business. So it's not lost on me. I feel blessed and fortunate to be able to um, open a brick and mortar store and actually have it be successful enough to go on to have two locations and then ha just have one location at a very um, well-known and well-recognized institution like Johns Hopkins University. So uh, all that being said, I put together a training program on how I manage my time and keep the stress down because I definitely got stressed. But if you do not know how to manage your stress and you can't manage your emotions, you cannot manage people and you cannot manage business properly. Some people are really talented so they can actually have business going on around them if they got the right people type of thing. But just imagine if you got your affairs in orders, you got your mind. KJ was popping, homie. It's my brother right there. If you got your mind right, then you can actually manage things in, in a way that makes them grow, makes them scale, has positive impact on a lot of other people like your employees your associates, the people that you work with. So before we actually talk about how I streamline my schedule and how I manage stress by streamlining my schedule, right? So I have other uh, modalities in which I actually manage and, and, and deal with stress, but managing my focus and my calendar and my time is the main thing, right? You got to know what to say no to. You got to know how to handle your priorities. Don't prioritize your schedule schedule your priorities, right? So a lot of people get caught up just like having a to-do to list, having a schedule, and they don't work on the right things or the important things. We're going to talk about that in, on Sunday in our stress less streamline strategy. So that's what I call it, my strategy for how I streamline everything, make it easy. And I'm talking about it's just something you can do within 60 to 90 minutes, and you will have your whole next month maybe more planned out and it only take you like 60 to 90 minutes and you gotta have the time to get them fits off right so you know if you got enough years in kj <laughs> you, you, that's like default right you don't even have to spend time on getting the fits off you got a whole wardrobe right type of thing you know all about that you got a basement full of clothes but i wanted to talk about some of the books that help me get my mind right and keep my mind right so that i'm able to manage stress at the levels of which it come to me as an entrepreneur and then also as a person who uh who had a full-time nine-to-five job, had the opportunity to open a business, and had to double dip and burn the candle at both ends. So I really got worn out, got burnt out in 2022. Um, some other dr dramatic things happened, and this is not about to be a sob story. I'm going to talk about some of the things that really propelled me forward. So I had a whole lot of books that I read over the years. I streamed it down to like five. I might pull out six. I'm going to talk about the very first one. So I did therapy. Shout out to SSA. They covered therapy for me. I did therapy and in 2018, well, prior to 2018, I did therapy. But during that year, I read The Power of Habit. Now, The Power of Habit is all about uh, what we do or why we do what we do in life and in business. Because I'm always thinking about business, right? And so basically, it talks about the whole loop, the whole cycle of how a habit happens, right? You have your triggers, you have the action you take. And then you have the actual habit. But what I liked a lot about this, you see I tab up like a lot of my books and stuff, right? A lot of people don't really use the books. Like people read books, but they don't necessarily study books. You got to really study. Some books are meant for studying, like the Bible. You got to study the books. You got to study the lessons to really learn some things. So in the back of the book, there's a framework to change habits, right? So I put that in there and I actually did. So let me show you guys. This is what it is. So it's the cue, the routine, and the reward. 
So you get a trigger or a cue, you do the habit, and then you get the reward from the habit. Whether it's a good habit or a bad habit, you know what the end result is because it's a habit that gave you something that you wanted to keep getting, so you continue to do it. But there is an exercise in here where you had to write out uh, some times where you feel a certain type of way, basically. I'm going to just call it that. And it helped me understand what one of my triggers was and why I couldn't get business, my business off the ground. So I had a business with my friends that did really, really well, but we had momentum, we had energy, we had each other. Since then, I've had other businesses solo and I wasn't able to really get them cracking like I wanted to. And the the two businesses was a clothing line, which it did decent, it got some love, but I didn't know how to manage all of the moving parts for a clothing line. I didn't know how to market it well and it takes a lot of money and I wasn't smart enough to do the simple things that I had in front of me. I was trying to make it all fancy because I went to design school and I actually knew some stuff that other people didn't know. And I thought that was what people would be buying. But I wasn't telling any stories. I wasn't really finding a way to connect. I was just like, hey, my design looked good. You know it looked good. You should buy it. And that didn't work. Then I had I started to do a creative agency where I was doing events, designing some merch, kind of like trying to build some lifestyle stuff around it. It worked okay. Wasn't really popping. I couldn't figure out why. I read the power of habit and I realized every time I had some level of success with the businesses and I got knocked down or I felt like it wasn't going my way, I would always get mad and I would always think back to something that somebody else did or didn't do, right? And it was very specific uh, to who, who that was. The power of habit from the cues, the routine, and the reward, well, the reward was it made me feel good and it absolved me from connection. Okay. So the reward was I felt like it absolved me of the responsibility of actually doing the right things in my business because I was always blaming it on what somebody else didn't do. And once I read that, because it's like a whole exercise, you got to like really write it out between the power of habit and another book called Mind Hacking, which I didn't bring down. But it helped me hack my mind that along with therapy. And I realized that in doing business, I can't you, you I can't rely on anybody else to get anything done. So power of habit so you can understand cues, rewards, and routines. Also, you can develop better habits. Also, you can help other people. Like if you have uh, older family members who seem to be losing their memory, there are things you can do and implement to help them be so ingrained in their routine that they can always be successful in taking care of like minor tasks. So power of habit and mind hacking. I'm sorry I did not bring mind hacking down, but the exercise is actually in mind hacking that I was able to hack my mind and get over that hurdle of blaming somebody else for what I wasn't able to do in my businesses. So after that, Everybody knows 2018, um, that's when I started Good Part and Company. And before that, it was called Here Comes the Good Part. That was the design agency. I switched my mind, figured out what I was going to do, right? So I switched it up. Now, I'm going to talk about how I started to plan out my schedule on Sunday. And wait, here it is. If you want to come in to the training, boom, I just pinned it. If you just reply clear here, then it'll send you uh, the... Registration, so you can just register to come on Sunday, and we're going to do a training on the streamline, streamline, um, stress less streamline strategy is what I call it, right? All right, so I'm gonna kind of go through these in chronological order, as close as pot, as much as I can. So this book here helped me do a lot of, help me understand a lot around marketing. So this is marketing by Seth Golden. Seth Golden is Seth Golden is an OG marketer, internet marketer. He helped do some things in the beginning of Yahoo. He's just incredible. I've been following him for, I'm talking about years and years. Seth Golden, just go to Seth Golden's blog, subscribe to his email, his email list, his mail, his, uh, yeah, his newsletter joint. It go out every day. He don't miss a day. He's super, super consistent. I learned so much from his level of consistency. I read his emails every day. I used to up until like two or three years ago, but I still get them every day. So I still check in. Anyway, he talks about really just finding your purpose, and living in that and doing it in a very practical way that cuts through and serves other people. And This Is Marketing is just one of the many. I think he has 11 books, a couple bestsellers. The Purple Cow was like really, really popular. Um, the Dip is another one. This Is Marketing help you understand a lot more about marketing. He kind of started with like email and email marketing and he broke that and it's called permission marketing. So a lot of people who study and do marketing understand permission marketing, which is where you basically ask for permission. Hey, I got this thing going on, but if you want to learn about it, you know, give me your email and then I'll have your permission to send you information about the thing. That came from Seth Golden, Permission Marketing. So he talks about this is marketing. You can't be seen until you learn to see. 
So you have to really understand who it is you want to see, who you want to serve. And that helped me. It, this is it, like, let's see how many chapters is in this. 23 chapters. And it's great. I learned a lot about marketing. We got a lot of compliments for a lot of branding and marketing for Good Part and Company. Branding and marketing are not the same thing. And some of the things I understood through the promotions company that I had with my friends and then some of the things I learned through following people like Seth Golden. A lot of it came from following people like Seth Golden. I execute on some of the things he talks about, some of the things not so well, but he definitely starts with about being a, being a part of a tribe, contributing there, growing from there, the smallest viable audience, all that good stuff, right? Really understanding who your audience is. Here's a little graph. It's like a little chart that kind of shows you a lot about how to make it happen. But first, um, you know, you have your, child, your tribe. There's a network effect, identity love, direct versus brand permission, enrollment, how you get people to get down with you, the smallest viable audience. All those types of things are things that I understood from him that, and I used it for good part and company. So that helped me kind of grow and get people on board to come in and support a plant-based juice bar, even if they didn't know really, if they, they didn't know if they, if they, they didn't want to be plant-based, but they wanted to know more about maybe the lifestyle or something, right? So that was cool. So this is marketing, really great book on marketing. That gave me a lot of insight around how I can go further and uh, start to build up my business, okay? So this is marketing. That helped me realize I can cut through. I, I, got, I got a message. I got a group of people that I want to serve. So that's what we was at. Now, the next um, book is Your Next Five Moves by Patrick Bet David. So if you're on the internet and <laughs> social media, Patrick Bet David is growing his brand crazy big. Like it's really doing well. Um, he's most known for valuetainment. But before valuetainment was a thing, it's, just, it's Patrick Bet David doing his thing. And... He is a millionaire, of course, and he does, um, he sells insurance. He owns a life, he owns an insurance company and he has like, it's a really big insurance company to, to the point where I don't even know. It's so big. I don't even know the name of it, but he has an insurance company and he got into media. He, he, people, people really recognize him a lot for, he was on a series of interviewing people that were in the mob. He's a, he's a Libra. So I got a lot of love from him. I'm a Libra and He's very curious and inquisitive. He's willing to talk to any and everybody and get their get their point of view. And he offers a lot of insight around entrepreneurship, how to build business, how to be persistent, how to plan, and your next five moves subtitle, Master the Art of Business Strategy. So I used to follow a lot of his videos on YouTube. And early on, before he had like such... Valuetainment is now a media company. When he was first doing it, he was just doing a lot of basically like chalkboard talks and breaking down different things. And, you know, he was kind of further along. He had money. So at the end of it, he would offer a PDF on what he just taught. And it would be about entrepreneurship, business, like just all types of things. One thing I learned from him is about becoming a, what's it, what the difference between an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur is, right? An entrepreneur works, has all the skills and responsibilities of an entrepreneur, except for one thing. They don't have all the risk that an entrepreneur would have, right? So I learned a lot about that, and that was cool. So boom. What I learned most, you see this joint is tabbed up too. This one was kind of dense too. Patrick likes to talk, and but he's great at it. He's great. He has a, he's from Iran. He has a, a, a unique accent. Um, I, learned about, about, I learned a lot about uh, business from him, operations, systems. But what I really, really got from him in this book was what my actual motivation is. And after reading this, it helped me really, really, I didn't tab it. I think I didn't tab it because I actually just put it straight down in my, in my book. Um, and here it is. So what actually drives you in business? Of course, I'm not going to lie. Once I started doing business beyond, beyond uh, fashion design uh, and got into good part and company, you got, you, you got to make money. And I like it. I like the idea of making money. I like the I like what it brings into life. And it it brings impact. And impact is one of my is one of my purposes. So impact and freedom of time. Those are the most important things for me, like my purpose in business. 
and he has like a whole little matrix or a chart and how he kind of breaks that down. And now when I really thought about it, it's like, it's not because I want to make a whole lot of money just to say I'm richer than somebody else. I want money because I want freedom of time and I like making impact in other people's lives that helps them live and live their life to their fullest expression, right? And so that's what I like to do. So I started with health and wellness because that's what I knew most and that's what I could offer the most service. But guess what? I had, I'm, I had, I'm going to let people know. I'm not scared to say I'm trying to make money off of it. All the time that I put in reading these books, going to college, designing, branding, spending my own money, I'm make my money back and way more, right? I'm trying to get to it. In fact, most of my conversation is about business. So I don't even spend a lot of time talking to people that don't talk about business. It's not because I don't think what they say is not valuable. It's just that that's what I'm trying to do. We're going to talk about why in one of my later books, but it's not because I'm some money hungry. I'm, I'm driven in a certain type of way that's different. I understand. Once you become an entrepreneur, you clearly got a switch that's turned off or on. I don't know what it is, but got to be a little bit crazy to believe in some of these things, but it's okay. Gonna be all right. I just got turned up a little bit because I really believe in that. So I'm trying to make impact and I'm trying to have freedom of time, right? So my purpose, impact, freedom of time, um, enlightenment, it's a whole list of different things, right? So Pat Bet Bet David, your next five moves. Look up his 15 how to do business or like your fifth his the fifth your next 15 moves. He has like a, 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 a talk, like a keynote speech. It's really, really, really good where he talks about like how to plan like your next 15 moves and how to see that far ahead. And to be honest, when you really when you really know you're trying to do business and you try and scale, you can't you try and grow, you have to have a long time horizon and you so that you can make all the moves that you need to make to get to that level of success to make things big and grow. So I like Pat Beck David a lot. He has a new book called Choose Your Enemies Wisely. I don't have that one yet, but your next five moves is great. Ray Dalio did a quote on it. Ray Dalio, billionaire. So Pat Beck David, he's dope. Seth, Seth Golden, Patrick Beck David. Power Habit, Charles Duhigg. All right, so the next book is from one of my favorite business people, Daniel Priestley. You guys may have seen him, maybe not. He is an Australian gentleman living in the UK. He's been doing business there for a long time. He is very popular for a series of books on entrepreneurship, one of them being Key Person of Influence, where he talks about he talks about positioning yourself as a key person of influence. So these are five the five step method to become one of the most highly valued and highly paid people in your industry. So basically he talks about becoming just a little bit famous, right? A little bit famous in your niche, in your industry, so that you become the go to person uh, in that industry. And you leverage your influence to build business. And it can be done in a whole lot of ways. But he got a five step method. It's, it's, a, it's a method that has all P's. You have your pitch, you have your publish, um, pitch, publish, publish, product, profile, and partnership. So I joined his business coaching program. He has a KPI accelerator, right? So it's funny, his KPI is key person of influence, but KPI is also uh, like key performance indicators in business. So it's just like all things, it's all kind of works together, right? Uh, but I paid for coaching with Daniel because like once I bought this book, then he has another book called Oversubscribed, 24 Assets, and then Entrepreneur Revolution, which is his first book. So I'm all in on Daniel Priestley. I'm going to say, go get his book. Matter of fact, he gave you the book for free. Just go to the website and just hit, he going to send you the book. And then you get into his content um, before he started getting as, he's been as popular as he is in the U.S. Um, he's still probably not even that, I don't know. But in the U.K., he's popping. Uh, he has a bunch of different businesses. I bought in, to, like I, I, I subscribed to the services in his business, but I paid for coaching with him for, uh, and it, it was, I learned a lot. Some of the stuff that you see on this board comes straight from the KPI Accelerator program. It's not a cheap program. It's very valuable and it's worth worth it. He has partners. His partner's name is Mike Reed and he has a third partner as well. But with these five Ps, right? Pitch is something that you kind of always going to be doing and working on, informing people, letting people know what it is that you do. I've had trouble with this. I, I'm not going to lie. I've been having trouble with it because... I can't, I don't just introduce myself as, excuse my notifications, I don't just introduce myself as a guy who owns a juice bar. Like, no, I'm, I'm Quintel Harkin. I'm the owner and founder of a good part and company, plant ba- health, uh, plant-based health cafe and juice bar, right? We, the first and only 
Black-owned food service partner at Johns Hopkins University. Off the back of Good Partner Company, I launched Hawkeye Holistic, which is a health and performance coaching platform for people with high demand, busy careers, right? And through holistic means, we help them recover, improve their performance through fitness, nutrition, stress management, so that they can achieve all of their goals personally and professionally. You do all those types of things, you put that in your pitch, and people know they ain't talking to some regular degular. Right, so they he breaks it down even more eloquent than that. You can make it as succinct as succinct as you need to be. It's not about having the elevated pitch. It's about having the pitch that separates you from any and everybody else. And hey, what's happening? It's about having the pitch that separates you from any and everybody else, so that you can be that key person to influence. You are the one people want to go to. So I'm not. So I've done well enough for people in my circles. I'm the key person to influence when it comes to being healthy and, and living a plant based holistic lifestyle. I'm the key person to influence for men in my circle when it comes to doing yoga and stuff like that, right? And so I have to continue to work on that pitch, publish content to show my uh, my capability, right, and my proficiency in my niche, and then it's going to help build my profile. I can make product. Clearly, my product is Good Part and Company, juice, smoothies, plant-based items, right, and then partnerships. I got a partnership at Johns Hopkins. I, I I told y'all I was in this program. Like, I told y'all I was in this program. So clearly I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And, and I don't even see it all the time because I just live it. I need to do better with publishing content. Thus, I'm here doing this live. But Key Person of Influence, one of my favorite books on business. I was in the Key Person of Influence, uh, the KPI Accelerator. I'm not anymore, but I may return. It was it's really great. Um, it's really set up really well. I learned a lot. And now I'm applying it to be a key person of influence with Harkham Holistic uh, because food and beverage does not lend itself to being a KPI in a certain way. They run it up the way I'm trying to run it up because I just told y'all we're trying to get paid. We're not here to play no games. We're trying to get money and make impact. And you make more impact when you got more money. So that's where we at with it. All right, so boom. That's where we at with this one. Now, my next book is from somebody who is just as popping and he is definitely a KPI in the coaching um, space and business space, Myron Golden. So this is his book called The Boss Moves. Um, Boss is an acronym for Business Optimization Success Secrets. If you throw a four letter word into a book, a sentence or a song, I am a fan of yours. Straight up. Mariah Carey got a bunch of songs with big words, right? <laughs> and I like them, but seriously, Boss Moves, Myron Golden, just look him up on YouTube is where he publishes most of his content. He popping on Instagram, but listen, Myron Golden coaches a lot of your favorite coaches. It's a lot of really high level coaches out there and their programs cost a lot of money. So go get some money so you can pay for their coaching so you can get more money, make more impact and everybody just be better off. Myron Golden, Boss Moves. It was hard to get this book he only sells it from his website. And if you don't catch the link when it's linking, you ain't going to link to the book. So he has another book before this called Trash Man to Cash Man or something like that. I didn't get that book. I got Boss Moves because I know what this book was about. He talks, he breaks it down in all of his videos. Um, he's also a pastor. He's a really great speaker. He speaks very simply, very to the point. Um, and he studied the Bible for years. So a lot of it is about the Bible, stories about the Bible, but it's not about being religious. It's about business lessons in the Bible. We're going to get to that. We're really going to get to that in a little bit. So, Boss Moves, again, I, I tell you, I tab everything up, uh, write in stuff, I bend pages, um, I learn lessons, and so let's talk about some of the lessons I learned from Boss Moves. Now, wealth has a need for speed, underline that there. I love the way he wrote this book. It's super simple. He got these cool little cartoon illustrations. I'm a fan of corny little cartoons and stuff. Uh, but wealth has a need for speed. Listen, speed speed is what it's about. One thing I learned from Ryan Leslie, the entrepreneur and musician, success moves at the speed of communication. Success in business needs speed because your money needs velocity, not just speed. You don't need your money to just move fast in and out. You need it to have a direction. That's what velocity is, a speed and direction, right? And you need the direction to be going up, <laughs> up and to the right, right? Just like a stock. So... Wealth has a need for speed. What he breaks down are like, he breaks down multiple principles on how to optimize a business. So he first kind of just starts out with um, 
the three moves you can make in your business so that you can make more money. The different types of entrepreneurs. So low volume, high profit, and uh, high volume, high profit. And the lowest level is low volume, low profit. You basically ain't getting no money, right? Where I am right now, to be honest, I'm high volume, low profit. So I can make some money, right? Uh, I'm high value, but selling smoothie, smoothie bowls and juices. But the profit margin on that is not that it is not high. That's when I'm at. But listen, I, I accelerate through the business learning process. So since my money has speed on it, I can do other things at, at some point, right? Um, he talks about the levels of uh, levels of implementation, right? For actual how you actually make money. So you can make money through implementation, like physically doing something, through unification, like managing people who do things, communication, which is given the direction that people may follow through song, through books. That's communication, right? The word. And then imagination just uses this creating ideas that's going to create opportunities, which create money. Uh, there are a lot of things that I learned from Myron Golden through his website and through his book. He goes on through other principles about Eliminating distractions. But one of the principles I like the most, so boom, this is it right here. I wrote it down. And he so he has a YouTube video where he talks about how he takes notes and how he studies books. And I just so happen to be pretty close to what, how he does it. He's a, he's more in-depth than I am. But anyway, I'm going to break down one of the things that I really learned and like a lot about. Speed learning like a boss. That's, that's the name of this section. So he says that learning, we got taught to learn the wrong way. Or that they told us learning was one way when it's different. Learning is learning about a thing so you can learn to do a thing so you can then go do the thing. I told you, he speaks very simply and direct. Learning is learning about a thing so you can learn to do a thing so you can then go and do the thing. That's what a lot of people get addicted to just consuming information and getting all these resources. I fell victim to it before too. And you think you learned something. You have to learn it so that you can learn how to do it. And then you go do it. So I read, I don't read for entertainment. I'm not saying I never read a book to be entertained, but I read to learn things so I can learn about things so I can go and do things. And the things that I learned the most about before a good part of the company was health and wellness. So behind me here, there's a whole bunch of books on nerdy plants and stuff like that, right? So, and then I learned how to do those things, implement it into my life and been plant-based for over 10 years. And then I started to learn more about business so I can learn how to do business so I can go and do business at better and better levels. So you learn about a thing so you can learn to do the thing so you can go and do the thing. That's what learning is. And that's how you acquire a level of mastery, which he breaks down in the book. Mastery so that you can do, you will be able to do something without having to use effort towards getting it accomplished, basically. So I learned a lot from Myron Golden. Look up. It's going to be, I, don't, I can't promise you, you always going to find a link, a link that actually works. Taz, what's popping, bro? Um, but Myron Golden, Boss Moves, Business Optimization Success Secrets. He actually wrote this book based off of a, a presentation he gave to other entrepreneurs. He broke down all these concepts, had it transcribed, wrote a book. Super simple on his part. But he also has years and years of experience to get here. So, um, But we all can get there, right? When we learn how to do the things to a level of mastery. Let me give you all one more concept that I liked a lot. And this has been popping up in other books I've been reading lately. So when you want to learn something, you have what I learned in another book called Clear Thinking. You have like exemplars or role models when it comes to the book. And you kind of model what they do. But nobody ever tells you how to model what they do. Uh, but Myron Golden broke it down. Where he learned the lesson from, I don't know. But my guess is going to say... From the Bible, because that's where he learns all his business lessons. So you want to have incremental mastery towards effortlessness. You want to be able to learn something incrementally to where it requires no effort for you to get it done. How do you do it? You follow somebody who already has done it. And how you follow them is first, you model their belief systems. What does that person believe about the thing? This is what helped me really start to do better with Good Part and Company and then ultimately start with Harkham Holistic because... I had belief around what it is that I know about how to do business and how to leverage your best skills. So you model their belief systems. Next, you model their physiology, how they move about the thing, right? 
Uh, I'm not sure. He has a lot of brothers, he says. I'm not sure if he has, if that's one of his brother's names, though. Uh, I'm not sure about Johnny Golden, but um, if you look up, if you just look up Myron Golden on YouTube, though, he's definitely going to pop up. And the last thing you do is you model that mental syntax. I know where he got this lesson from. He got this lesson from Tony Robbins, right? Tony Robbins is the great motivational speaker, right? You model that mental syntax. Mental syntax is the order in which... Uh, a person breaks down the messages about a thing in their head, the way messages go off in their brain, right? So for my folks like like James, he in the basketball like me. So if we study in Mike, if like if Kobe was studying Mike, he modeled his belief. His belief is I'ma destroy whoever in front of me because I'm the best player on this court every time I'm on the court. He modeled his physiology, he modeled all of my MJ moves. Like we got we seen all types of clips. Where's Kobe looking just like MJ with the fadeaway, with the dunk, with the walk, all that, right? He modeled his physiology. This is how you know that the, the, the boss moves, the secrets, the, these work because we see it acted out in the real world. And then he modeled his mental syntax. Kobe voice inflections uh, similar to Michael Jordan. Um, he speaks thoughtfully and directly like Michael Jordan. Um, but also when he's talking about basketball, he's breaking down moves, steps, going left, going right, taking two steps, stop, pulling up, half spin, over the right shoulder. That's the syntax that he knows these moves has to go that way on the right block in order to beat the defender the first time, the second time, the third time you come with the counter because he expecting you to half spin. Now you spin totally, you got him shake, you shook him, or you half spin, come back, pump fake, up and under. Like that's really the breakdown. Yes, I study basketball too, but I study business that way too, right? So Let's break it down one more time. You get somebody who has accomplished the thing that you want to accomplish. You model their belief system, their physiology, and their mental syntax, the order in which they break down or um, they break down the messages uh, around the thing. So that's one of the books that really helped me get better in business and about my, my approach to life and business, honestly. All right, so we five books in, but I, I had to throw in this I got some bonus books. So this third one is, hold up. This book is in my, this book is in my Audible. So what's really cool about this book is, I'm not sure if this gentleman is friends with Myron Golden. I would imagine that somewhere like, you know, cream rises and people, people making moves, you tend to encounter a lot of other people who make moves. This is one of my favorite books. It's called Business Success Secrets from the Bible by Rabbi Daniel Lappin. Now, yes, I, I have a rabbi. His name is Daniel Lappin. You can find him on YouTube as well. And he addresses himself as your rabbi. Now, Daniel Lappin is a Jewish man. And there may be a whole lot of stereotypes around Jewish people when it comes to money. But when you listen to Business Success Secrets from the Bible, you learn how Jewish people are taught to understand the word from God. You understand that business is integrated in all the moves that they make. All that they learn is about business. That's why they have family is business. You really got to get into this book. It's 42 lessons on business secrets from the Bible. Myron Golden touches on some of them. He talks about it in his book. Daniel Lappin talks about it. It's not about, it's not, it's not about religion. It is about the lesson that you learn, but you will learn a lot about the Hebrew language and about Jewish culture and how they handle business. Again, you need exemplars. You need people to set examples. If you're going to follow some, if you're going to follow a, a people around money, you you would you would follow Jewish people because they are good with money and business because they are taught that from their most sacred texts. And let me break down some of my favorite things in this book. Yo, my favorite part, my, my favorite, favorite, favorite lesson is that money is a spiritual concept. Daniel Lappin defines spiritual as anything that's not tangible, but we know is real. Okay. Now, money is a spiritual concept. One, now most of our money is just numbers on the screen. Now more than ever, it is super, um, it's very, it's, it's very easy to see that money is no longer about being tangible. Because a hundred dollar bill is not going to spend in China, but I can still have a hundred dollars. Just have it on my phone, 
use it. You can exchange the currency, but it's recognized as currency because mo because money is a spiritual concept. It is energy that has been created through transaction between humans, which is business. We need each other for business because it adds to the whole world. Business is a very, very good thing. We all need it. If we didn't have it, we would not grow. Society would not bloom. We probably wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have any of the things we had if it wasn't for business. So that is my favorite lesson from the book, that money is a spiritual concept. Once you start understanding that, you can, you're can you going to change your energy. You're going to turn your energy up. You're going to keep the vibration and the frequency high on your energy because you keep high energy, you become a high energy source. Now money and currency, it got to flow to and through you. You become it. It is, it's, it's, it's very, very real. Money is a spiritual concept. That's my favorite business secret from the Bible, from Daniel, from Rabbi Daniel Lappin. So the bad thing about some books in Audible, Audible, Audible is that all of them don't come labeled with the titles. So I'm going to go straight through my notes because when I listen to Audible, I actually write notes. I just like write the notes down, boom. So I have to stop and like type them in with it. And a book is easy. I can just highlight. I can write. I can tab it. So there are a lot, a lot of lessons. So again, spiritual means those things that cannot be measured by means of scientific dis discovery, right? So it's not tangible in the world, but we acknowledge that it, that it exists. That's why money is a spiritual concept. Uh, one of the things that I really, really like, he talks about a, a lot of the things uh, all the things are tied together. That's one thing you'll learn in Business Secrets from the Bible. All of the things are tied together. How you manage your family, how you manage your health, how you manage your finances, how you manage your friendships. All these things are, uh, matter. One thing he talks about is that there's an inverse relationship between IQ and money. A lot of high IQ people do not make a lot of money. In fact, they are notoriously bad with money. You know who is one of those people? Unfortunately, is our brother Cornell West, which we found out he's not good with his money once we figured out, once we learned that he was running for president. He has been a teacher at an Ivy League school for however long, and his finances is all screwed and jacked up. And he got books out that's been published, made money, all these tours and talks. High IQ, low on the income. And it's because it could be for a whole lot of reasons. But really, money is a spiritual concept. High IQ people don't often deal in spiritual concepts. They're dealing with a whole lot of science, a whole lot of data, a whole lot of talking points, a whole lot of I'm smarter than you. And it's not that it's not that that's bad, but they're not in the, they're not doing what's in the interest of serving God's children, which is what Daniel Rabbi Rabbi Daniel Lappin talks about too. Right? And it's not like they're not out trying to hurt nobody. It's just that once you put service of God's other children first, you create more abundance for everybody. So you go solve other people's problems. Like they say, you can get anything you want if you help everybody else get what they want or you help enough other people get what they want. And so when you got a high IQ, a lot of times you're just in your head or you're just doing the thing that you do and you're not really serving. Um, he talks about how life isn't about what you know. It's about who you are. Again, high IQ, that's about what you know. Who you are, you want to be the guy that people know. You want to be that key person to influence Going back to my other book, right? People know that you're the key person of influence when it comes to whatever industry you are in as a, as a, as a person in business. So I got one more thing that I really like uh, with, that he talks. So he breaks down the Star of David, one, one of the definitions of the six points on the Star of David. And I'll break that down last. What I want to say, going back to money being a spiritual concept... Earnings and profits are God's reward for forming relationships with others and serving them effectively. As you can see, I learned a little bit because I didn't even get to this note and I was just talking about serving God's other children. It became a part of me because once I opened the doors to the first good part in company, it don't matter what I was feeling. I had to show up and serve and I had to do it with a smile on my face and good energy because I was at good part in company. And I accepted that responsibility and in return... Johns Hopkins came knocking, and they was like, you doing something that everybody else ain't doing. How about you come do it with us? And I said, let me think about it. You feel me? But that's just my little story. But really, earnings and profits, right, money, are God's reward 
for forming relationships, connecting with other people, with others, and serving them effectively. Get other people what they want. That's why I put together the Stress Less Streamline Strategy training for this Sunday. I'm giving other people something that will help them, which is a way to manage their calendars, manage your tasks, and ultimately manage and relieve your stress because Lord knows we get stressed out. This training is really effective for people who have busy, demanding careers like I got friends in tech, other entrepreneur friends. I got a lot of friends that's in like real estate and then financial services. I got a couple of friends that's like accountants and things like that, right? So the, that sometimes I got friends in communication. Sometimes their phone is always on. They, they always on call. When you're an entrepreneur, you don't get days off, when, especially if you really want to win and you're really trying to create abundance and impact. It don't turn off. People need to be certain. And then food and beverage, people got to eat every day, B. So I close on Sundays. I miss out on money. But that's because I got to manage my stress. And I ain't trying to hear. I ain't, you ain't going to tell me you going you, what you want on your smoothie and I need a date of recharge. No. You'll get a smoothie on Monday. All right? And I'm going to be happy and smiling because I gave myself a day off. And I'm teaching that training. And that's going to help other people. I want to teach you to be able how to manage your time so that you can have mental clarity so that you can, won't be mentally fatigued or drained or burned out because it happened to me. And it's just it's not a good feeling, no matter what, posi- what position you're in. But most I know for sure it's, it'll be helpful for very busy, busy professionals. Right. But again, I'm going to read that lesson again. Earnings and profits are God's reward for forming relationships with others and serving them effectively. OK, so. These are three people I want you to look up. Four people. Rabbi Daniel Lappin, Daniel Priestley, Myron Golden, and Seth Golden. Golden is spelled G-O-D-I-N. Here's the order in which I came across these individuals. Seth Golden first. I feel like he's been my friend. Matter of fact, Seth Golden replies to emails. And his email list bigger than a lot of other people's email lists. And he ain't got to sell his email list. He is happy doing his thing where he lives in upstate New York. He's from Canada. Amazing, amazing guy. Quirky little glasses and everything. Love Seth Golden. Shout out to Seth Golden. Look him up. I've been rocking with Seth Golden since like 2000, 2009, 10, something like a long time. Imagine being on somebody's email list for that long. Talk about commitment, man. He's been, he been doing this thing for a long time. So I came across Seth Golden first. I just came across Daniel Priestley a few years ago, then Myron Golden, and then Rabbi Daniel Lappin. Although I have seen that Rabbi Daniel Lappin before, I just wasn't following his, his content or his books and all those types of things. But one thing I can say about reading books and, and learning lessons is that lessons will always take you to another lesson from another teacher. As they say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And when the, whatever, however that goes. But when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So when you start learning these lessons, these the lessons start to compound, compound, and you start to learn a lot. I do believe that books come into your life uh, for a reason. That all that you will always learn a lesson. You it may not be timely. Like a book may come into your life. You're like, uh, like this power habit. This is a this is the thickest book out of all of these, and I still read all of this. Patrick Beck Beck David. I probably learned about look him up too, but I learned about him before Daniel before Daniel Priestley actually. So when you keep when you keep people in your atmosphere, these people may be I follow them and admire them and learn from them from a distance, right? I don't know them in real life, but I spend most of my time with them. I'm watching them online, I'm watching them on YouTube, I'm following them on Instagram, I'm reading their books. These are the people I spend the most time with outside of just, you know, like my closest you know, friends like my mom, my lady and things, you know, like this is really where it's at for me. I'm not spending my time doing a whole bunch of like the stuff that I used to do or it's not, it's not that those things are bad. Those things do not feed what I'm trying. Like they don't feed me. They're not going to help me make the impact I want. And they're not really going to get me paid. Like I'm like, I ain't on the front. Like that's not what we want. Like we really, we got to make moves and, and make impact and really serve others effectively. I'm going to give you a quick story. This is, um, we're going to go out on this one and then we're going, and then I'm going to see y'all on Sunday, hopefully. 
the six month anniversary of Good Part and Company. Flo, what's popping, homie? Uh, the six month anniversary of Good Part and Company when we still had our location in Mount Vernon, right? Next, next door to Aloha Sushi. I had a guy used to come in often and he was a particular kind, like a particular customer, right? He's one of those kind of people, but he was a cool dude. So he came in one day, he was just like, yo, you know, I like coming in and supporting the black business, but bold, the bowls ain't really hitting like that. It's not like how it is at Pure Raw. And I was like, for real? He was like, yeah, it's, you know, it's like, it's real soupy and this and that. I was like, damn, for real? I was like, you know what? I appreciate your feedback, sir. Thank you for that. So I went to Pure Raw and I don't never talk about them because I don't really look at other businesses' competition. I'm only here to serve. Uh to serve my customers effectively. And that's what this lesson is about. So he told me my, my smoothie bowls wasn't hitting. In order to serve him better, I had to make my bowls better. Because if he felt like that, I'm pretty sure somebody else felt like that. So I went to Pure Raw, I bought their bowl, and I reverse engineered the bowl. So I'm looking, I'm like, what their bowl doing? Now, now I got the I got the codes. You know what I'm saying? I got I got the keys like 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 Hove and Future. Like I got the keys. I know what to do. But you can have all the ingredients, but you ain't got the recipe. Right, and that's what the training is about. Everybody got Google Calendar. Everybody got a, a app for to do lists and reminders, but they don't got the recipe on how to use it. They don't got the strategy, and so I'm offering that strategy on Sunday for free. All you gotta do is come through and kick it with your boy. It's gonna take like maybe an hour, maybe a little bit less, depending on how many questions y'all got. Back to the story. So I'm knowing all the ingredients. I know how to make a smoothie bowl with my eyes closed. Clearly, I don't know how to make it good enough. So I literally reversed the engine, like I turned the whole bowl upside down and I'm looking at it from top to bottom. Each part, I'm like, okay, their strawberries look like this, mine don't. What's happening? Their smoothie consistency like this, mine not. But sometimes it is. How can I get back there? Six month anniversary come. I text him because I'm here to serve effectively. So effectively, I got my customer's phone number. So I hit the homie. I text him. I'm like, yo, it's Q from Good Part and Company. I, ch- I improved the recipe on my smoothie bowls. Come back, it's on me. He come back. Now, I told you, he liked to support black business. He came back the same day and bought another bowl. No lie, he came in the morning, picked up his free bowl. Boom. He came back, probably like, we closed at 6. He came back around 2.33. Got another one, like, yo, that joint was hitting. I said, yo, I really appreciate what you told me. I had to go and, re- and work it out, but we made it better. Once he told me, once I got his stamp of approval, I knew I was effectively serving my people. I put out a text, six month anniversary, all the bowls, six dollars. We ran it up. We sold the most bowls we ever sold to that point. That recipe has led that bowl to be the number one item on the menu at Good Part and Company to this day. Number one item at Good Part and Company is that bowl because. I knew I had to maintain relationships like 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 the rabbi told me, make relationships so I can serve other people effectively. And now we're running it up all up the smoothie bowl. So I really pay attention to all the lessons from all of these books. Hit me up. Reply clear if you want to come to the training on Sunday. Hit me up if you got any questions about these books or any book recommendations. I'm not going to lie on my my podcast. You guys should check out the podcast too, the Healthy Deposits podcast. But I said, you know what? I think I'm going to start just reading books online. Like, I ain't saying I got the best voice, the best accent, the best spoken English. But I love these books that I got. And I really, I I read this book every day. I read this book every day. I read this book every day. Shout out to Myron Golden. I read this book every day. And then... I listen to Rabbi Daniel Lappin like every two weeks. Key person to influence. I I paid to be in that program, and then this is another book. I'm gonna talk about this one on another on, on another live or maybe my podcast. I read part of this book four times a week. I read this book every day, like legit. So I appreciate you guys spending time with me this evening. I hope y'all learned some lessons. I hope y'all took notes on some people that come up on it and listen to and learn about Patrick Bet David, Daniel Priestley. Seth Golden, Myron Golden, and um, Rabbi Daniel Levin. That's my rabbi. Now he can be yours. I'm signing off. Again, reply clear. Hit me up if you got any questions about anything. I love y'all. 
and y'all have a good night.